I actually had to unlearn um, a lot of things that um, I was taught growing up. I had to unlearn things that not only that I was taught growing up, but that I just happened to just see and take in. One thing that it looked like for me was that I had to, to make sure that I was being a good mentor to my daughters. And I didn't want them to think that their father had to come home, share with me what he found through personal development, fix me, and then you know I can get in the game, right? I had to show them that no, I get in the game because he's living life as a Muslim man and I'm living my life as a Muslim. So our lives look very different. So fatherhood and motherhood intersect. However, they're different. They're very different. And because we raised girls first, they had to look at me and go, okay, now what are you going to do? And I'll tell you why very quickly. This is important, especially when they're very young. We, when we were flying over here, there was a family in a, a row next to us. And the little girl said, daddy, what do you do? And he said, I'm a doctor. And she knew that. She said, well, mommy, what do you do? And she said, I'm like at home. She said, but what do you do? And she just couldn't say anything. She said, because mommy, you need to be somebody too. And that little girl was probably four or five years old, at least five. And I said, "Woo!" right? That with the turbulence almost took me out. I was like, wow. Because you see how young she was watching what was going on in her household as a five-year-old. So I knew if my, my, my children had sight, <laughs> I wanted them to not just see me be busy, but be productive. Because there's a big difference between being busy and doing a bunch of stuff and not producing. So if I'm gonna co-found and, 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 and establish a family, then I need to be one of the mentors in the family. So that's the way I looked at it. And it, my, my personal development journey started there and I didn't just, just look um, although the Quran and the Sunnah, we need it so much because that's the blueprint that we need. I looked in other books as well, you know, because sometimes as Muslims, we go, well, if it's not here, then I don't want anything to do with it. You pick the book up, read it, and what is outside the perimeter of Islam, you leave it. That's it. And then take the beneficial knowledge and apply it. Don't just read it, apply it. So that's what it was for me. I love mm -hmm. it, mashallah. And just to touch on what you just said, that yes, the Quran and Sunnah paramount, right? But Allah inspired these people to write these books. Like that, they, they, they didn't just think of this stuff out of um thin air. Like you said, success leaves clues. Allah is the definition of success. He leaves clues. He gives you the inclination to put pen to paper. So yes, we can uh you know take from these books. And that, as you said, you know, take the good of it and leave off the rest. I mean, right? I love it. Go ahead. Well, there's a hadith. There's a hadith, even even a little bit more, where the Prophet said, the word of wisdom is the lost property of the believer. Wherever he finds it, he's most deserving of it. In the Sunnah the Timurid. So that addresses it. So whether you're dealing with astronomy or learning about biology or whatever it may be, again, the word of wisdom is the lost property of the movement. You know, and that's what caused the Muslims to be at their pinnacle and to spread and to grow in our glorious, illustrious history. And if we want to look at the failure now, we could also look at that lack of that personal development and where we are as an ummah, in my opinion. I'm sorry, I think Coach Nada was about to speak. Yeah, my um, intentional personal development came <laughs> with um, being, um, being in the network marketing field. And I say intentional personal development because you learn a lot of things through life. You know, you learn a lot of things through schooling and things that you just take, and it does allow you to be a better person. But it's just, you just take it as it is and you keep moving on and you do the thing and you just do the thing, right? 
but being intentional about it was realizing that I actually had to unlearn um, a lot of things that um, I was taught growing up. I had to unlearn things that not only that I was taught growing up, but that I just happened to just see and take in. And that was affecting my life in ways that were not as beneficial as they should have been. Or, you know, how you have certain things that are needle movers that, you know, move you a lot faster to your goal than you, want, you know, than you are moving to. So you have to learn what, what are the things that are that's going to do that. Or and you also have to unlearn the things that are holding you back. So knowing that, and I didn't learn that until being, until I was in um, my first business ever. Well, Man, I'm going there. I would say my first business ever, but my first business ever was actually in high school. They kind of did something like that, but whatever. That's neither here nor there. <laughs> so, my first real business was um, they encouraged that personal development. Pardon the interruption. Let me ask you a question. Do you think that you could thrive better in the community that's more supportive? Now, I already know the answer to that. But did you know that outstanding personal relationships actually has a community? that is supportive and where we really hang out a lot. It has a number of areas and things like, for example, I, I deal with the men in the kings and men section where we discuss a number of different men issues, whether it's religion related, parenting related, whatever it may be, this is where we communicate and connect. It. And as an introvert, I love the idea of an online community. <laughs> so um, we have that and to be able to speak with like-minded people speak with other wives, you know, wives, whether you're an incoming wife, whether you're a first wife, you're a wife, period, in general, you're only practicing monogamy, whatever the case may be, to be able to be in a community with people who understand what you're going through, understand any type of issues you have, and also being in a place where you have support from others, where it's not all over social media for everybody else to see. Yes, and it is a safe space. So if you guys want to see us, or if you want to connect with us, come to our community. Indeed, and like they said, it's private, all right? So you don't have to worry about your stuff being all over the place or all on social media, try to find the comments and go scroll. We have the subjects, we have all this type of stuff. Just go to outstandingpersonalrelationships.com, look on the top of the page, click on community. We look forward to seeing you there. Back to the video. And in how I grew up, you know, kind of personal development was called self-help. And self-help was not okay. <laughs> it's like you had a problem, you had some issues, you know, in that type of type of thing. So um, being able to say, oh, well, this is something that you should be doing. This is something that you should be intentional. This is something to help you become better, become a better you, become you know better in your relationship, in your life and everything like that. I'm like, okay, what else can I learn? What else can I learn? But it took so long. I actually had a Tony Robbins program that I got from, this is crazy, I got from a thrift store. <laughs> and it was Cassette, you know, talk about, you know, we always double cassettes, the 30 day program. And it sat on my shelf for two years, two years before I opened. I actually had it before I got into the business that I was in. And I was like, you know what? Let me open it. It was day five of that, that program that I had this breakthrough that I sat in my car, cried, everything like that. And I said, you know what? I had to be better. That's when I knew for sure that it's like, you know what? What I'm doing right now, is not gonna get me to what I want. So I need to change that. So that was the intentional start of my personal development journey. Mashallah, listen, I mean, we all roads lead back to Tony Robbins for, for a lot of us. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I mean, he's the OG. What are we gonna do, right? Right, OG, OG, triple OG. But you, you know what I like about what you just said, um, Coach Nyla? We're all in coaching, right? And we can probably speak to this same concept, this, this same thing that we see. And that is that people sit on the information or sit on mm -hmm. the action to go get the information, you know, click the button. You've seen us <laughs> 20 times. You've seen us 20 times. Just click the button, right? I, I, this is an off question, but I think it's something that we need to ha answer. Why do you think that is? Why do you think that, why did you sit on that information for two years? Why did it just sit there? I'm sure there are people that <laughs> take <care of> this. <laughs> come, come on with it. Come on. 
the interesting <laughs> thing is, again, you know, I mean, it's, <laughs> you can have a, a fear, but with me, you know, it's, di it's different than the fear of the unknown. Um, that, I thought it was actually a good idea. I heard about Tony Robbins. I just, you know, didn't open it up. And mind you, like I said, it was in a plastic area for two years. And, um, you know, you quote unquote let life get in the way. <laughs> and then you're just like, okay, I'm just doing this. I'm, 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 I'm existing. You know, you're doing the thing. We hear people say that a lot. I'm busy. I'm busy. I'm busy. I'm too busy. Um, and it just has to take something. Um, and we've talked about it and heard it, you know, the POD, you know, the point of decision or the point of disgust. We're like, you know, it got to be something different. It has to be something different. So, you know, until you get to that point, you know, you won't change, you know, until you get to a point of decision or a point of discuss, you won't change. And I was, apparently I wasn't there yet. <laughs> so I had to, even though I had the information, even though I physically bought the information, I went out and did it because I saw it. I was like, oh, this seemed like it would be something good to watch or listen to or whatever. And I didn't do it, but I didn't, it's just that I wasn't ready. You know, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. The teacher was always there. I just wasn't ready to receive the information. I want to chime in on that too, kind of going into why. One of my mentors asked the same question. And he said, you know what? This is why. Because at the end of the day, he, he described success and failure. He said, success is practicing the simple disciplines on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. And failure is making little errors in judgment on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. So imagine this, a person picked up a cigarette, they smoked it, end of the day, they can't breathe, having asthma issues and all that, and they trace back to the cigarette, the next day be done. See, failure doesn't happen at the end of the day. You don't have catastrophe at the end of the day because you didn't get up, you didn't put in work, you didn't make the calls, you didn't get the education. It doesn't happen. It sneaks on you slowly. So it's not the first cigarette that's going to kill you and give you lung cancer, like what happened to my father right here in right? He started at 16. A year from now, you know, I'll be 47. He died when he's 47. You know what I'm saying? So it wasn't the first one. It was probably the 257,000th one, if that makes sense. So the little errors in judgment that happen over time, that's why. Because it's easy to do, but it's also easy not to do. Here are three ways I'll say the first relationships can help you. Make sure you guys are following us on our social medias at Outstanding Personal Relationships on YouTube and Facebook and on IG at Outstanding Relationships. And make sure you sign up for our email list and you can actually email us at support at Outstanding Personal Relationships where you will get updates on our new book, Let's Talk Polygyny Uncensored, as well as exclusive access to our lives and bonuses. Absolutely. If you're looking for more Polygyny education, make sure you visit polygamymasterclass.com. Now, if you're looking for coaching or counseling with either Coach Fatima or Coach Nyla, you can find them at... Make sure you visit me at coachfatima.com. And myself at coachnyla.com. That's how we can help you. Stone Lake. Peace. Peace.